Chris, you want me to play track? Get a little bit monitor on that one too. Check, 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 one, two. You can get a lot of monitor on this. Check, one, two. Check it, check it, one, two. Three, four. Little bit, yeah. Perfect, thank you.
Don't be shy. I know you're staying in the shade, but don't worry. This wonderful ceremony is only going to take a little while. So as we begin in this ceremony, we ask you folks to gather closely so that, you know, you're, by the way, unless you don't want to be on camera. If you don't want to, uh, sunglasses are great for being on camera because nobody will recognize you. So that's good. Um, and you can gather a little closer here and there and be a part of a great moment for a wonderful woman, a wonderful defender of our country, a wonderful person who has given her life to this great nation and to the process of government that can work with the right person in charge. The official ceremony would begin with the sound of the poo. As the 
sun rises and breaks the pre-dawn darkness as it illuminates our beautiful Hawaii and all the special places on the islands that we live on, that we love so much. We are illuminated. We are shown brilliance. And we are given the gift of aloha, this torch that will light the way for us here in Hawaii and for the nation and for the world. I compose this Oli for Tulsi as she begins her journey to take this light of aloha across our great nation. And I'd like to welcome you and mahalo each and every one of you for joining us to send her off. Aloha. Aloha.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Top Notch Sisters. So, we are honored to have each and every one of you at this great gathering. Thank you so much for taking the time. As I mentioned to people who are visiting Hawaii, thank you for coming to our islands, for helping to share in the aloha that's always here. It really is here. It's in the wind. It's in the rain. It's in the sunshine. It's in the calm. And the aina that we are on has been truly a part of our culture and our people for centuries. When we think of the very first people who came here between 500 and 750 AD, it's fantastic. And then those who came from Tahiti, led by Pao, that changed the culture, but added the honor of our leader, the royalty, and the kingdom of Hawaii. And then, we have this beautiful moment to share today in the process of government. And, and you have, have spoken clearly, clearly as you gather here. And, and so it is time, time to continue with the Kiki, the, the, the next generation to Hawaii, the, the, the next generation to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we welcome, welcome to the stage Kukula Kamanao Manoi Hai. And, and the, the king of, of Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, don't be shy. When you when you make applause for the keiki, you gotta do it really big.
Ah, the wonderful Hula. Once again, mahalo to Kumu. Kamanao Manoi Hyde. And the wonderful Hula is shared with generations. That's what it's all about. And I've been uh, just on the inside of that song, like for Y and I. And so Tulsi took the time to go out to different areas, yeah, as she has served Hawaii. So that was the beautiful Hawaiian hula. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty. In fact, speaking of pretty, we have a we have a very talented singer here in the islands. And you know, at 14 years of age, I don't know if you've ever done this. She picked up the guitar and started to learn to play cuz she wanted to. She started writing songs cuz she wanted to. Then the other thing that she did well, she went out. So she was in San Diego, and she went up the coastline and went to different areas and wasn't afraid because she learned all kinds of music of the world. And she brought it home here to our Hawaii. Truly an award-winning performer and recording artist that we are honored, and Tulsi is honored, to have sharing this beautiful stage and this beautiful moment. So ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our wonderful recording artist. She is coming up on stage. May I help you please? Give me a minor. Would you give her a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen? What an artist of Hawaii. No, no, no. Big applause. This is a celebration. Yes. Hello. to be here to celebrate Tulsi's presidential campaign. Can I get a chee And what better place than to celebrate and kick it all off here at the bottom of a rainbow, right? Like old, cause we live 
so proud, proud as the sun, to have this Manoahine running for president. So I'm going to do this song, Proud as the Sun, for all of us today. Just as it says, we will be there when it rises. As sure as it is, as high as it stands. Out of shadows to our destiny. Because we love, praise to be. We are proud as the sun. Thank you guys. Well, I think with Tulsi we can live aloha and let love live. So let's stay stronger than bamboo. This is bamboo.
set our rules will be stronger than them that move. Yeah, if I got you, there's no containing what we can do. We see the world from a bird's eye view. Yeah, we'll be taller than them that move. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. We'll be taller than them that move. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mahalo. Give me a minor. Ladies and gentlemen, Kimmy A. Minor, she just gave you everything. Oh, turn around, take a bow. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Oh, she's hot pie. Woo! Beautiful new life. No wonder you have that sparkling smile. So beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that beautiful about life, yeah? That we have. We have a wonderful celebration of the next generation coming. And we are the guardians. We are the ones who watch. We are the ones who care. And because you care, I've been asked to ask you, try move up closer. Try move up closer. Because we want the nation to know. We want the nation to feel you. So yeah, come. Come right up. Yeah, don't be shy. Because that's what it's about. Except for the VIPs right here. Just let them between the stage. You don't have to move your chairs. Mahalo. And so, we're gathering. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're gathering here. And this is a beautiful time, isn't it? Isn't this going to look great to the world? When Kimie was singing, did you feel the makani? Did you feel that wind? You know, for we in Hawaii, everything is special. That was special. Wow. The sunshine is beautiful and special. How many of you happen to be visiting from another place? Visiting. Okay. Well, thank you for coming and taking a break to come to the sunshine. Because it's here for you. And we're very, very thankful for that. Some of you, it's just chance that you happen to be here. But it's most important that you are. As we continue, we have another wonderful, fine artist that we have seen grow in this business. The first place I saw her was at Kapalua in a piano bar. Someone's playing the piano and she's singing jazz. And then she started to sing all kinds of music, including the great Ha'i, the Hawaiian falsetto. And today, she is the artist who shares with you all of her aloha in her special style and award-winning performances over the years. With five Grammy nominations, 25 Nahoku Hanahana Awards, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the beautiful island of Maui, a daughter of these islands, sharing her gift with all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Amy Hanayali E. Gilliam. Aloha, everyone. How are you folks? How exciting is this? Mahalo Nui for having me. I thought this would be a good song for today, especially welcoming Tulsi home. You all look beautiful this afternoon, glowing.
Jeffrey Peterson on guitar. Tulsi is very proud of um, our voyagers, our voyagers that have been voyaging around the entire world. For those of you who don't know, Hokulea came home, our double hull canoe, our indigenous canoe. My oldest brother, Timmy, is one of the captains on her. And there's a white turned bird. Well, first of all, back it up. For those of you who don't know what Hokulea is, she's our double hull canoe that just made her maiden voyage around the entire world in three years. Weeha! What's so fascinating about the canoe is there's no navigational equipment on board at all. They only navigate by the stars and the tides and the horizon and this little bird called the Manu Oku, white turn bird that comes alongside the canoe and helps guide them. So I wanna see if you folks will do a small audience participation with me. I'm gonna sing and rap in Hawaiian. Then when I point to you, you're gonna make the noise of the white turn bird. And all you're gonna do is one word. Ku e. Can you say that? Ku e. Oh, come on. A little bit louder than that now. Ready? And? Ku e. Awesome. So I'm going to sing, and then you're going to go. Ku e. Ku e. Ku e. Ku e. Super easy. You think you can handle? Yeah. I have faith in you. Let's try it. And? Ku e. Ku e. Ku e. Almost got it. One more time. And kue, kue, kue. Awesome. Kue. All right, here we go. Let's go, Jeff. 
家。You go, cool air, you go, girl. Cool air. I was uh, texting back and forth with her the other day, asking me to come and play this event, and I said, of course I will. We've become friends over the years, and I said, you know, I was working on the Princess Kaiulani movie. I was helping write a song for it, and they never used it in the soundtrack, and I said, it would be perfect for you in exactly what you're doing. It's called The Power of a Dream. And she listened to it and she said, can you please perform it, the last song of your set? So here I am, it's a song called The Power of a Dream. You listen real closely to the words. the sea. One girl with passion and devotion inspires all the world to dream her The storm cloud, there are rainbows. Our wishing's 
so much to to share about the presence of the heart and spirit today yeah i wish we could include everything but you know coming up is a very special person just before amy i mean after amy but just before tulsi okay and that special person is a person who served with her in iraq and kuwait my son served in iraq and kuwait Ladies and gentlemen, welcome a soldier, Ryan Soon. Hello, friends. As I said, my name is Ryan Soon, and I'm very honored to be here with all of you to show our aloha and our support to Tulsi. I am a soldier in the National Guard and a combat veteran. And I've had the privilege and the honor to serve under Tulsi's leadership with the Hawaii Army National Guard during our deployments to the Middle East. I knew this day would come soon enough because in all the time that I've known Tulsi, she's had this perfect balance of strength and compassion resolve and compromise, courage and humility. All of the characteristics that just make people want to work for her. All the qualities that we need in our commander in chief. Now I remember this one mission where we were in Kuwait and we were assigned to meet with these government leaders to facilitate 
training for the local police and military forces. Now remember, Kuwait is a very male-dominated society. And so they couldn't possibly fathom the idea of a female leader. So we show up to this place and we're greeted by these government officials who are practically ignoring Tulsi because she's a woman. And we're standing there very awkwardly trying to figure out what are we gonna say because our whole thing was to bring her to talk to them. But Tulsi knew how to read a room. And instead of being offended or jumping in there to assert her authority and in turn um, offending the Kuwaitis, she just stepped back and she let us exchange pleasantries. And ingeniously, she started to assign tasks to individual soldiers. So quietly and out of earshot of these Kuwaitis, she would go to one soldier and assign a task and they'd move. She'd go to another soldier, assign a task, and they would move. And as I'm talking to these Kuwaitis, I can see it in their face that they finally realized what was happening around them. And Tulsi's now about six or seven soldiers in before these Kuwaitis stopped talking to us and just ditched us to go talk to this woman who commanded such respect from the men that worked for her. So long story short, we spent the next half hour sitting in the official's office very quietly while Tulsi and the official talked like they were best friends who haven't seen each other for years. And at the end of the day, right before we left, I watched as the Kuwaiti official excitedly just listened to Tulsi lay out her plan for the joint operations. Now I know this might not seem like that big of a deal to some people, but for me, it was amazing because I got to watch a lifetime of prejudice be washed away in a matter of minutes because of the leadership and aloha of Tulsi. Now the last story I do wanna share with you really quickly is a little bit more personal to me. So about a couple months ago, I had an opportunity to pick Tulsi up from the airport when she was making one of her trips back home to speak with the people. And as we're driving over the H3, I look over at her and I see an all too familiar look on her face. It was a look that I've seen a thousand times during deployment and every single time I went to visit her in DC, it was just that look of working constant and continuous 20 hour work days. And it just prompted me, I had to ask, Tulsi, what you're doing here? Is the juice really worth the squeeze? And she looked at me with a bright smile on her face and she said, it depends how you define the juice. And she looked at me and she said, I love what I do. Is it long hours? Yes. Is it hard work? Absolutely. But I love that I can make a positive impact in people's lives. She said, whether it's working in Hawaii or in DC, I love that one person can make a difference. I love to serve, that, I can, that she can speak for people who can't speak for themselves, and that she can make things better for the people of Hawaii, and share our values of the Aloha Spirit with the rest of the country, and help improve their lives too. Now I'm sitting there driving, and I wasn't expecting this at all. I mean, it was a beautiful response that could have been a commercial on the first take, but it came from Tulsi, just off the cuff, and half asleep. And you know, only she can do that because she was truly speaking from the heart and I could feel every single word as she spoke them to me. That's just who she is. She is a soldier devoted to serving our people and our country. And her life's mission is to serve others. Every choice that she's made in her life reflects this. In 2002, she ran for state house. In 2003, she enlisted in the Army National Guard. In 2004, she volunteered to deploy to Iraq. In 2006, she served Senator Akaka in the US Senate. In 2008, she volunteered again to deploy to Kuwait. And when she came home, she served in city council and then went to Congress to fight for peace. As a veteran, I know firsthand how important it is 
to have a commander in chief that knows the cost of war, knows the sacrifices that our, so our soldiers make, and the impact that our wars have on the countries that we invade. As a soldier, Tulsi knows the cost of, cost of war, which is why she fights so hard for peace. Tulsi is uniquely qualified to serve as commander in chief. She is the courageous leader that we need, especially in this challenging time. I have witnessed her leadership firsthand. And when challenged, even in the face of adversity, Tulsi always chooses the hard right over the easy wrong. Tulsi's unwavering integrity may have come at a cost, but she didn't care about herself. She cared about what was right. And when we deployed, I knew she had my back. I'd follow her anywhere because I knew that she had my back. And as president, I know she'll have all of yours. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce our next president, my fellow soldier and my friend, Tulsi Gabbard. for being here. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii. Growing up here in Hawaii, I loved swimming and surfing and having fun in this paradise that we are so fortunate to call home. But I gradually realized growing up that I was actually happiest when I was doing things for other people, doing things to protect our water, to protect our oceans, our land. I felt that this was a different kind of happiness than anything else I experienced when I was just thinking of myself. It was a deeper happiness that stayed with me anywhere that I went. I knew then that no matter what path I ended up choosing in my life, that I wanted service to be that foundation. I'm proud to serve our country as a soldier. I'm a major in the Army National Guard where I've served for the last 15 years. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to serve the people of Hawaii in so many ways over the years. In the state legislature where I was elected at 21, serving over 100,000 people in the Honolulu City Council, and now for over the last six years, serving in Congress. Thank you for your trust and your aloha. I'm truly grateful. Our nation was founded on the principle that our government should be of the people, by the people, and for the people where all people are treated equally and with respect in these United States of America. But today, that vision seems like a far-off dream, where hatred and divisiveness have cast a dark shadow across our country. We're being torn apart by powerful, self-serving politicians and greedy corporations, people fomenting hatred, bigotry and fear, inciting conflict between us because of the color of our skin, the way that we worship, or the political party we might belong to. This corruption of spirit is driven by greed and selfishness, and it is eroding the very fabric of our society and democracy itself. This is not who we are, America. 
The very best of our nation is exemplified by our nation's veterans who embody what it means to put service above self, who've sacrificed their own personal interests out of a greater love for our people and our country. Because love is not just a feeling, it's a powerful force, a force that drives us to act, to put service above self. And our men and women in uniform, generation after generation, motivated by love for one another and for our country, have been willing to sacrifice everything for us. They don't just raise their hand and volunteer to serve only to fight for one religion but not another, to fight for people of one race but not another, people of one political party but not another. No. When we raise our right hand and volunteer to serve, we set aside our own interests to serve our country, to fight for all Americans. We serve as one, indivisible, united, unbreakable, united by this bond of love for each other and love for our country. It is this principle of service above self that is at the heart of every soldier, at the heart of every service member. And it is in this spirit that today I announce my candidacy for President of the United States of America. soldiers' principles to the White House, restoring the values of dignity, honor, and respect to the presidency, and above all else, love for our people and love for our country. So I ask you to join me. Join me in putting this, this spirit, this spirit of service above self at the forefront, and to stand up against the forces of greed and corruption. Now, the road ahead will not be easy. The battles will be tough. The obstacles great. But I know that when we stand united by our love for our people and for our country, there is no obstacle we cannot overcome. There is no battle that we cannot win. John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. We must heed this call to action today at a time in our history where it is so badly needed. We must stand up. We must fight for the soul of our country. Stand up against bought and paid for politicians who kowtow to special interests, selling their votes to the highest bidder. Where instead of draining the swamp, our president has turned it into a cesspool of corruption. We must stand up against big pharma and insurance companies who extort those who are sick who put their profits above the health and well-being of our people. We have to fight to make sure that every single American gets the quality health care that they need through Medicare for All. We must stand up against the big Wall Street banks who gamble with our money and our future. Stand up against overreaching intelligence agencies and big tech companies who take away our civil liberties, privacy, and freedoms in the name of national security and corporate greed. We must stand up against those who pollute our land, our water, and our air. We must stand up against private prisons, who are profiting off the backs of those who are caught up in a broken criminal justice system. 
a system that puts people in prison for smoking marijuana while allowing corporations like Purdue Pharma, who are responsible for the opioid-related deaths of thousands of people, to walk away scot-free with their coffers full. This so-called criminal justice system, which favors the rich and powerful and punishes the poor, cannot stand. We must join hands and stand up against those who perpetuate bigotry, hatred, and violence against our brothers and sisters because of their race, religion, or sexual orientation. We must stand up, stand up against this administration that claims to believe in America first, but who sells our troops, our weapons, and our interests to whichever foreign country is the highest bidder. We must stand up against those who dishonor our troops, treating them as political pawns and mercenaries for hire in wars around the world. We must stand up. Stand up against powerful politicians from both parties who sit in their ivory towers, thinking up new wars to wage, new places for people to die, wasting trillions of our taxpayer dollars, hundreds of thousands of lives, and undermining our economy and our security and destroying our middle class. Now, President Trump campaigned against regime change wars when he ran for president. But now he bows to the wishes of the neocons who surround him, clamoring for regime change wars that he claimed to oppose this time in Venezuela and in Iran. These powerful politicians dishonor the sacrifices made by every one of my brothers and sisters in uniform, their families, as they are the ones who pay the price for these wars. In fact, every American pays the price for these wars that have cost us trillions of dollars since 9-11. Every dollar that we spend on regime change wars or on the new Cold War and this nuclear arms race is a dollar coming out of our pockets. Dollars that should be used to address the very real urgent needs of our people and our communities right here at home. We must stand united and stand strong against those in both parties who never tire of war. Neocons and neolibs who drag us from one regime change war to the next and who are exacerbating the new Cold War, pushing us to the brink of nuclear war. We deserve better. Our country deserves better. Now, just over a year ago, the people of Hawaii and our country thought we were under a nuclear attack. We saw college students running frantically across UH Manoa campus, trying to find shelter. We saw a father lowering his daughter down a manhole to try to keep her safe. We saw families who piled their children into their car and drove to the mountains looking for a cave to find shelter. And a mother cowering in a bathtub with her children. A father trying to choose which of his children he would spend the last minutes of his life with. There was no shelter. There was nowhere to hide. Now, those of us who serve in uniform made a choice. We made a choice to put our lives on the line to serve our country, willing to pay the ultimate price. We volunteered for that. We chose that. But my six-year-old nephew, Malu, he didn't make that choice. You didn't make that choice. 
Our families didn't make that choice. Our troops volunteer to serve our country, to go to battle, to defeat those who threaten us, to keep the American people safe, to make it so while they are fighting on the front lines, you and your children can sleep soundly at night. But as powerful politicians beat the drums of war and ratchet up tensions between the United States and nuclear armed countries like Russia and China, the front lines have come to our doorstep as we sit on the precipice of nuclear war. The reality is right now there are over 14,000 nuclear weapons in the world, many of them far more powerful than those that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, enough to destroy the world many times over. Now, throughout the 20th century, during the Cold War with the Soviet Union, we were told we had no choice but to live in fear, that at any moment we could be annihilated by nuclear war. And children in schools practiced reacting to a nuclear alert hiding under their desks. Those who had money built bomb shelters. Those who couldn't afford it wondered if and how they would survive. And with the, the dissolving of the Soviet Union, that danger was supposed to have disappeared. But our leaders have failed us. Because today we face a greater risk of nuclear catastrophe than ever before in history. This situation is unacceptable. The President's most important responsibility is to serve as Commander in Chief. I will do so as a soldier who understands the seriousness of this responsibility. I want to take a moment to recognize and express our appreciation to our fellow veterans who have joined us here today. Please raise your hands and allow us to recognize you. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Those of us who have experienced firsthand the cost of war fight hardest for peace. I served in Iraq in 2005 in a medical unit where every single day I was confronted with the high cost of war and who pays the price. I take seriously the responsibility of securing our nation. I know that weakness invites aggression and that our men and women in uniform stand ready to take on and defeat those who threaten the safety and security of our people. I also know that our current foreign policy is undermining our national security. It is depleting our resources and exhausting our military. As your commander in chief, I will work to end the new Cold War and lead us away from the abyss of a nuclear war that could destroy our world in mere minutes. I will build partnerships with other nations based on shared interests, leading with the foreign policy, not based on conflict, but instead cooperation. I will end the regime change wars that have taken far too many lives, cost trillions of dollars, and undermined our security by strengthening terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And I will have the courage to meet with both friends and adversaries in the pursuit of peace and our national security. Because if we lack the courage to meet with those we disagree with, the only alternative is war. Now, bending the arc of history away from war and towards peace will require every one of us to stand up against the military-industrial complex and powerful self-serving politicians who have a vested interest 
in perpetual war. When I was deployed in Iraq, there was a big sign at one of the main gates to our camp. And that sign read in big block letters, is today the day. It was a stark reminder for all of us that any day could be our last. From the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep, I knew that that day could be my last. And it made me reflect, how am I making the most of the time that I have? This is the same reality that faces us us today. We have no time to waste. There is far too much at stake. So the choice is ours. In order to make this change, every one of us must answer the call to put service above self, to put the interests of our country over our own. We're motivated by our love for each other, and our love for our country, we will stand up, we will take action, and we will overcome. Now, love should not be mistaken for weakness. There is no force more powerful than love. It's love that causes a firefighter to run into a burning building to save the lives of total strangers. It is love that drives a mother to run in front of a speeding car to save the life of her child. It is love that inspires a soldier to lay down their life to save the lives of others. It is love that inspires every one of us to care for each other to fight for each other, to fight for our freedoms, to fight for our country. Because what our country needs now more than ever is the spirit of aloha. That spirit of respect and love for one another and for our country. This is the most precious gift that Hawaii has to offer to our country and the world. Aloha. Because aloha is so much more than hello and goodbye. Aloha means I come to you with an open heart. I respect you. I have love for you and I care about you. Whether you are a friend or a stranger, I come to you with aloha. Regardless of the color of your skin, where you come from, how you worship God, who you love, or what political party you belong to. Dr. Martin Luther King saw this power of aloha when he first visited our islands and addressed our legislature in 1959. He said, we look to you for inspiration and as a noble example, where you have already accomplished in the area of racial harmony and racial justice, what we are struggling to accomplish in other sections of the country. And you can never know what it means to those of us caught for the moment in the tragic an often dark midnight of man's inhumanity to man to come to a place where we see the glowing daybreak of freedom and dignity and racial justice. After he returned back to the mainland, Dr. King said of his visit, as I looked at all these various faces and various colors, mingled together like the waters of the sea, I could see only one face, the face of the future. President John F. Kennedy, he also recognized this power of aloha when he visited Hawaii in 1963. 
And he said, we are proud of this city and this state and what it stands for. These islands represent all that we are and all that we hope to be. This is Aloha. And this change we need to see must begin in the White House. Because the White House should be a beacon of aloha, respect, love, and compassion for every American. Our nation was founded on the values and principles of putting service before self, rejecting the rule of kings who prospered from the sacrifices of the people, and forming a new nation founded on the premise that leaders should be motivated not to serve their own interests, but to serve the people. And deep inside the heart of every American is the love, honor, courage, and ideals that form the foundation of this country. Ideals that still shine in each and every one of us. Each of us and all of us must rise again now and come together for each other, our country, and the world. Our cause, our cause is to create a new and different path that reclaims our destiny and restores the uniquely American ideal, to seek a higher purpose, greater than ourselves, and to put service before self. That is the cause that is calling to every American today. So I'm asking you to join me. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to stand with me to build a movement of peace at home and abroad that will fulfill the promise of America, of freedom, justice, equality, and opportunity for all. Thank you all so much. Mahalo Nuilo. Aloha. Tulsi! Tulsi! to end with a Hawaiian feeling yes. and I, I want to share that before we do that can we share one more feeling that you have shared today that honors us all God bless America land that we love stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains, through the prairie, through the ocean, wide with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America. Our home and tall seas home. They have I echo on the hand away. Everybody join hands. Who home to join the people, Tulsi Vibine? They love you. Only no arena por no la nio. He Hawaii, aloha e. He hauli na opio Hawaii le. If 
Like so many of you, it is painful and disheartening to see how much divisiveness is being fomented by those who wish to tear us apart. We have people in positions of power who are not thinking about the well-being of the people and our planet. Where is that conversation about the needs of our people? Where is the conversation about peace? Every time we launch these interventionist regime change wars, it is not only our veterans who pay the price for that. Every single one of us pays the price. We have spent trillions of your taxpayer dollars to pay for these wars, taking those dollars away from our communities and our people who need them right here at home. We are the ones who have the power to make change. It takes every single one of our hands, our hearts, and our voices, motivated by this love and aloha, to take on those forces and those obstacles that can seem too great to overcome. There is no force more powerful than love. This is how we come together as Americans. This is why we fight for the future that we hope will be so much brighter for those that we care about, for the country that we love.